porch. I'm pretty sure it is the seed potatoes that I ordered from Johnny's. So I figured I'd do an unboxing video for you guys and show you guys what they look like and how I'm gonna prepare them for going into the ground later this week. So this is what 25 pounds of seed potatoes looks like. I ordered the Yukon Gold seed potatoes from Johnny's. I ordered the organic ones. The eyes are the spots on the potatoes where the leaves will grow out of. So what we could do is we could cut them into several sections with a couple eyes in each section and let them callus over before we plant them. That way we can have multiple plants instead of just one plant per potato. So that's one way to make your potatoes stretch and go a little farther. You have this one, for example. This one has several different eyes all over it. So to optimize this, we'd slice it in half and then the one on the bottom can be facing upwards and the one on the top can be facing upwards. So I'll show you exactly how I do it in a moment when I get my cutting board out. As you can see, there are several eyes on this one potato. Each one of these dark spots that I'm pointing to is considered an eye. This is where sprouts will form. How many pieces you cut your potato into is completely up to you, but you want to make sure you have at least two or three eyes per piece. The potato uses the energy from the piece in order to create the roots and sprout up the new plant. This potato, you can see I'm slicing it in half, and then I think I'm going to go ahead and slice them each into force, just because I see several eyes here, and I know that each one will form its own plant. I think I'm going to go ahead and cut these other two pieces into fourths as well. These are quite large potatoes. If it's a smaller potato, then sometimes I leave it whole and I don't cut it at all. It just all depends on the size. Just use your own judgment. You can't really go wrong. You can grow a potato if you stick it in the ground straight too and not cutting it at all. But I'm just going to cut all these up and I place them in my pantry just on this brown uh, paper bag that you see to let them callus over for a few days. So as you can see, after I cut these in half, I let them sit out for a little bit and they kind of formed a callus over the cut area and they've started to sprout just a little. So I'm going to make trenches, put fertilizer in, and then bury them. We have trenches approximately, I don't know, five inches deep six inches in between each roughly and now we're going to add some biotone starter in to our trenches. Now I'm just going to be placing the potatoes with the sprout size up down in the trench. have potatoes in the trenches. I need to do the other half, but I have to run back inside to get some more. I just ran back inside to get more seed potatoes. They're in a pancake box because that's what I was carrying them in. But I tried to grab the smaller ones because these ones haven't been sliced to put on the other side. Potatoes are one of those things that are pretty easy to grow and 
you don't have to worry about saving seeds, you just simply save the food that you're growing and to grow more. I was researching about potatoes and I actually learned that during World War II, they were one of the crops that did not need to be rationed because everybody banded together and planted them and they had such a great supply that they didn't need to ration them. Let's learn from our ancestors and plant potatoes and prepare ourselves for any uncertainties. I know grocery prices have been skyrocketing here where I live lately, and I'm sure they are across other parts of the country as well. So it gives me some peace of mind, and my wallet's some peace of mind, to have some extra potatoes into the ground. I've already planted some over yonder in the other part of my garden, and I am gonna be planting some here as well. Now I have two different types of potatoes. I have some russet potatoes that were just in my pantry that sprouted, and I also have Yukon Gold potatoes from Johnny's that I am planting as well. Now let's go ahead and get them into the ground. It's been a couple days since I planted the potatoes and now I'm going to be planting some asparagus. I just got these crowns in the mail today. I'm just going to place the roots in the water and leave the top part of the crown out of the water just so they get a little extra hydration. I'm just going to leave them in for one to two hours before planting. I have my asparagus crowns and we're going to go plant them in the garden. It's hard sometimes to find a free moment to plant things, but I have a few minutes here while dinner's cooking, so we're gonna get these into the ground. And I might even sow a few carrots too while we're at it. I'm gonna be planting asparagus in this bed here. It's a four by six bed. I'm gonna plan on doing one per square foot across. So let me just get them laid out and then I'll be digging my holes. These are the asparagus crowns. They look kind of crazy. They're like long tentacles. But I've had these soaking for about an hour, just in some water. I got these asparagus from Johnny Seeds. It's the millennial variety. It's a green asparagus. They have different colors, like purple and stuff, which I never even knew there was purple asparagus. We'll have to definitely add some of those in years to come. Let me show you. So it's got this kind of nodule on the top. And then the, the roots are really long, like tendrils. Pretty wild looking. This is my first time planting asparagus, but I enjoy eating it, so it'll be good. It's one of those things that are kind of expensive to buy at the grocery store, so I'll definitely be glad to have some established here that we don't have to buy. This one, already has some growth happening on it. I don't know if you can see that. It's really big. I was checking out a few different books, trying to get recommendations about how to space them. And some people say eight to 16 inches. Some people say even more than that. So I'm just kind of eyeballing it and seeing how I can fit it into this space here. I'm just gonna give it a shot and see what happens. There are a couple different ways you can do it. I am going to do kind of a combination of some of the things I've read and we'll see how it works out. Okay, so that wasn't the easiest thing in the world to do, but it wasn't too bad. Um, these roots are just a little bigger than I was expecting. So I, you know, things in the garden never go exactly as planned. So I changed my game plan halfway through. I was initially gonna do five per row, but once I spread out these roots, I saw how large they really were. And I think I'm just gonna do three per row and go ahead and fill up the second bed with asparagus as well. My husband was planning on making a few extra raised beds this weekend anyway. We do have strawberries coming this coming week. So I wanted to have the strawberries and asparagus and other perennial things in a raised bed where I don't have to worry about weeding them as much. 
and since we'll be coming back year after year, I wanted them to have their own dedicated space. Initially, that was going to be the strawberry bed, but change of plans, that's going to be an asparagus bed as well, and strawberries will have to be in one of the new beds that my husband makes this weekend. But let me show you how I put them in the ground here. So what I did is I kind of made a trench with a mound in the middle. So we have a valley, valley, and then the mound. And then I just kind of spread apart the roots a little bit so that the crown is sitting on the hump here and the roots are more in this trench. And I put some of this Biotone fertilizer starter and sprinkled it around and then I'm gonna bury them. So that, I don't know, it's about three-ish, four inches, inches of dirt on top of them. So that's my game plan and that's what we're gonna try to do for the rest of this bed. I hope that makes sense. Again, this is my first time I'm planting asparagus, so we'll see how it goes. I'm learning, but um, yeah, at least we're getting them in the ground. That's the biggest thing. With these perennials, just get them in the ground. It doesn't have to be perfect as long as it's done, right? That's kind of my motto. Don't have to be perfect, it has to be done. <laughs> And I'm gonna mulch this bed as well, so that'll also add some height on the soil level. The ones that are waiting to be planted, I put in the bucket of water just so they wouldn't dry out here in the sun so they can get two more rows here in this bed it's kind of comical i just have to laugh at myself things never go exactly how i plan them to go i was planning oh yeah it can fit everything in this one bed but then when i get out here and i see how big these roots are i change my mind <laughs> some of these are definitely way bigger than others this one's pretty small compared to this whopper I have to say it's an absolutely gorgeous evening for planting asparagus. We have the perfect golden hour glow sunset here and it is gorgeous. I was a professional photographer for a couple years and I have to say this lighting is spectacular right now. I mean it's beautiful just to enjoy but for photos it would be really pretty. I still haven't quite figured out how to film myself with my big professional camera. So I'm just using my iPhone today. That is on my to-do list to figure that out. When you see videos of my husband, I'm typically the one filming them and I use my nice camera. So I'm able to be behind the lens, but my camera doesn't have a screen where you can see what you're doing. So you have to kind of just set it up on a tripod and I move around too much for that to always work but it's on the to-do list for me to practice and figure that out. So I still do some of the pretty B-roll shots you see with my big camera. And I love that YouTube's giving me a creative outlook to take some pretty photography again. I might have to run inside and grab my big camera to do some B-roll shots for you guys of the rest of the garden in this pretty golden hour glow. Okay, so we just finished this first bed and now we're gonna move on to the next one. I definitely don't know what I was thinking, thinking they would all fit in one. I guess I was kind of just going off the eight inch spacing that I read in one of my books, but with the size of those roots, that wouldn't have worked unless I trimmed them down, which I didn't have the heart to do. <laughs> That does it. We got all the asparagus planted. I'm gonna pop some carrot seeds into the ground here in the rest of this bed. Oops, I dropped a few. <laughs> well, the good thing is they're pelleted so I can see what they look like. 
the carrots that I'm growing are from Johnny's. They're sugar snacks, hybrid main crop, pelleted carrot seeds. Pelleted just means they have this white uh, coating on the outside. I think it's just clay, but I'm not positive. But we're gonna put these in the rest of this bed. So I have, I'd say I have two thirds of this bed filled up with asparagus. And I'm just gonna put the carrots in the remaining portion. with me today as I plant some asparagus and some carrots. It is an absolutely gorgeous evening here. I'm gonna go enjoy it with my family and I hope y'all are having a great day wherever you're at. Once again, my name is Kara. This is Bluebird Homestead and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye y'all. Mm -hmm.